Hello there, this is Matthew Munoz. I am an author, artist, and commentator, and these are my offhand remarks on, uh, actually this is Offhand Remarks episode 41, on DreamWorks She-Ra. So, uh, anyway, I am an author, uh, and I've been practicing writing. One of the ways I'm practicing writing is by trying to, trying is the operative word, um, or I guess trying to would be the operative phrase here, uh, write one thing a week, five days a week, every week, and I started that a week or two before Thanksgiving. Didn't finish, uh, I guess it was three weeks before Thanksgiving. Didn't do anything the week of Thanksgiving. Didn't, uh, only did the first three days, Monday through Wednesday, the week before Thanksgiving, and then the week before that when I had started. So, uh, not going so great, but I'm not going to beat myself up. The important thing is that uh, I have Shira on the brain because... I'm uh, writing about She-Ra. I actually spent a decent chunk of the day today before recording this thinking about She-Ra episodes one and two, and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and comment on it because uh, I'm in the mood and I can't be writing at the moment, so I figure I may as well uh, not let those creative juices go to waste. I don't know that that's how juices, uh, creative juices work or not, but anyway, that's that's what I'm going with. So, here we go. DreamWorks She-Ra. She-Ra, more like Hira, right? That dude looks like a lady. Or that's a lady who looks like a dude. Uh, that's totally untrue. Um, well, I, I'm going to drop the P word. I, I, uh, I'm thinking about editing this out of my post because my, my review and my general thoughts, um, I'm like four or five big paragraphs in before I even get to my general thoughts where I'm just kind of contextualizing things. And uh, they say you need to kill your darlings, but I'm not sure I'm at the stage where I can kill my darlings. But I'm not necessarily sure I want to... Uh, P-O-R-N to be mentioned in my, uh, in my, my writing here. Um, I mean, gosh, I'm really open with my kids about tons of stuff, but, uh, that's one thing I'm not quite ready to talk about, uh, the existence of just yet. Um, I mean, how would an almost eight-year-old feel about that? I don't know. I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. So I think I'm going to strike that from my post. Of course, then there's the record of me talking about this, but, uh, the likelihood of her hearing this is very low and I spelled it. So there you go. Um, although she's a quick speller, so that's kind of dangerous. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, She-Ra is a decent show. We've watched like five or six episodes by now. Um, I really like the character of Adora. I really like the show overall in most regards. Um, I'm going to be really blunt and, uh, use, uh, I'm going to use words that anti-SJW type folks would use, uh, very harshly and angrily and with, uh, hatred in their hearts potentially. Um, but I'm going to do it, uh, just because these are the words that we need to use to talk about these things. Um, she was pretty, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go real quick. She was pretty cool overall. I like it. Well, like I said, we watched five or six episodes and they were enjoyable to me. Uh, they were enjoyable to the family, except my wife, of course, who doesn't like cartoons. I th- like the threshold for her liking the cartoon is very high. She likes Ghibli and some Disney stuff, like especially the more recent stuff, uh, like we watched and loved with our kid, uh, the first one, uh, Tangled a bunch of times, and uh, anyway, it was meaningful to us then, and I think we were, I mean, like, it, Tangled, I think, is like a top performing Disney movie, so it takes like a Tangled from Disney, or uh, you know, a Ghibli movie like Totoro, um, Kiki's Delivery Service, that kind of thing for my wife to get really excited about it. And even then, we watched Mary and the Witch's Flower, and she was like, eh, it's okay, I guess, it's a Ghibli-ish thing, but I think the witchcraft didn't didn't do it for her. So, like, she's a very, she's a very, she is, like, the most niche upon niche tastes, um, sort of. I mean, anyway, I don't need to go on about that. But the important part is uh, I liked it, the kids liked it, uh, it's girls who liked it. Um, I... If I had a boy, I would have experimented with him, but I don't, so hey, you know, what are you going to do? But um, Adora is uh, not a boy. She doesn't look like a boy if you change her hair. I don't think so, anyway. Not more so than some people in real life. Well, this isn't our good... uh, This isn't real life. It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon with heroic people who are supposed to have heroic proportions and who are supposed to make me want to do bad things to them. Well, slow down there, Jimbo. Or or Zach. My boy, Zach. Um, That's not the point of these cartoons. Uh... I have complaints about Shira that I'm going to write about in my review. I'll link in the post here uh, at some point. And uh, my complaints about Shira are that it is not adult enough. My complaints about Shira not being adult enough have nothing to do with how the characters are dressed or how sexual they are or are not. Um, my complaints about Shira not being adult enough is like, to me, there's like a lack of, like, it's, there's an inauthent- inauthenticity of culture because there's like, millennial hipster culture basically on these characters 
who are from another world and whose world is otherwise pretty believable to me as being another world except for the way they act. Um, so that's a little disappointing. The way they look, uh, I think, can be argued with. Um, I'm going to be a little bit mean. I, I'm overweight. I could probably lose like 30 or 40 pounds. I've got like a huge, I'm grabbing my stomach right now. I've got like a huge bulge of fat that I would love to get rid of. I go to the gym, try to work on my diet, try to get enough sleep. I'm having troubles, you know? I would never want anybody to say, I don't agree with the body positivity movement basically is what I'm getting at because uh, healthy at any size, I don't think that's really true. Um, I, I think that's overgeneralizing, but I also think saying unhealthy at slightly above, uh, you know, a supermodel is also dumb and silly. And I also, uh, I only really look at to judge anybody. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, I'm fat and my wife still loves me. Um, <laughs> if I got like way, way bigger, uh, she would still love me, but I think she'd tell me to stop it because it's going to impact us and it might impact her uh, in how much she finds me attractive. Uh, that's possible. I don't, I'm not going to speak for her. And uh, speaking for myself, um, if she got really big, uh, that might be a little bit of a problem. I don't know. Um, my mom was always really big growing up, so like I didn't grow up making fun of uh, fat people, large people, people with weight problems. Um, and I don't think it's cool to uh, but at the same time, I think it's going the other way. It's going the other way too much to, uh, you know, from large people, people with weight problems getting picked on to saying that it's super healthy to be fat. And that brings me to Glimmer. Um, Glimmer is a little chunky for a like rebel princess. Uh, now the sea princess, the, uh, the mermaid lady, I, I don't remember, Mermista, I believe is her name by all the way, by the way, all their names are like really cheesy and really, uh, like, um, like on the nose and I like it. It reminds me of, uh, well, it makes me think of what the eighties cartoon was probably like. Cause I don't, I have very vague, vague memories of the eighties cartoon of She-Ra. I think it was the eighties could have been the seventies. I don't know. Um, anyway, feels very eighties and it's aesthetic. Uh, but regardless, um, it feels very, uh, feels like what, you know, like a Stan Lee kind of name, Marvel comics kind of name for these people. They're ridiculous. Uh, and it's funny and like, it only works within the fantasy. And if you try to expand it too much out, uh, too far out, the, the names start to fall apart, I'm sure, but, like, Mermista's fine. But, like, if Mermista, one of the princesses, or even, like, the, uh, the flower child hippie princess, like, had either of them, them been overweight, um, or looked overweight, at least, because, anyway, it, anyway, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll get into it. If either of them had looked overweight, I would understand that. They are princesses who have withdrawn from the main fight against the evil horde, or the horde, and they are holding themselves... Uh, back and just being like reclusive and I would assume they don't see much action so maybe they might not need to be in such great shape or maybe they wouldn't care to be and I could understand them not being in fighting shape now um whatever uh Glimmer's mom's name is she's like real thin and it's almost ironic that she's super skinny and her daughter's you know bigger uh but then like Glimmer looks like she's animated big, but then in like episode four or something, uh, they're in a, a place where the horde is attacking and they like infiltrate. Um, I think it's with the, uh, the plant lady uh, in her kingdom, uh, the plant princess. Uh, they infiltrate her th uh, area and Glimmer puts on one of the suits of one of the, uh, uh, one of the horde people, one of the horde soldiers. And it looks like they slimmed her down there. And I was thinking like, guys, you at least need to be consistent. So it was like, does she just, is she like a cat? She looks bigger than she really is. I don't know. And again, like that's not really a problem. And, uh, it's just, it's funny to me that you would do it with that character, but maybe because she's core cast, they wanted to make sure they didn't just have a girl who's struggling or not, but who's bigger, who looks like, you know, some modern, you know what though? I'm not okay with normalizing being big. Again, it's not like we should mock it, but again, it's not the ideal. And it's, I think generally it tends to be less healthy and it's not something that should be uh, should be really put forth like that. But, I mean, you've got a whole cast of characters as one big character. You can't have that? No. I, to that, I say no. That, that you cannot have one big character, one overweight character, whatever, in the show. I think that's ridiculous and it doesn't reflect real life. Um, and uh, whether or not your art is holding up a mirror to real life uh, doesn't... I don't care. Um, you've got the big guy in Thor uh, and nobody seems to complain about that. But... Uh, I'm, I'm worried about certain people on the internet who are mad at this SJW DreamWorks uh, She-Ra because they don't want to do naughty things to all the female characters um, 
based on how they look. Like, they don't have model bodies or whatever. Because, again, this is a kid show. Why am I watching it? I like kid shows. I have kids. We watch it together. I was going to say I watch it without them, but I haven't yet. I haven't even watched Voltron without them, really. Um, not that they're, like, super into it, but they, it's zany enough that they enjoy it sometimes. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I don't see what the big deal is with She-Ra. Uh, I like Adora a lot. Uh, for the most part, she kind of reminds me of a Rey-type character. Don't you mean a Luke? Uh, no, she reminds me of a Rey. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, but I like her a lot. I like, um, well, actually, I'm going to write about the Horde and, and other stuff uh, later and, you know, you know, whether I share that on here or not is a different story, but uh, I really like the world they have set up. I like all the mythology and the lore. Um, it's super cool to me, uh, the visuals that they're using, um, as far as, like, design. And now, uh, again, I'm going to show... It's funny, I'm doing a little uh, G Gundam podcast, and in it, I call myself a selective enjoyer of anime. I still think that's true, but I want everything to be more like anime, uh, which is to say if this show were animated more in an anime style or with the anime quality, I'd be happier because I think for the most part, anime has higher quality. Hey, but look at all this crap anime from A1 Pictures or from these people or those. You know what? I don't watch those shows. I think I only watch high quality anime, which is why I'm a selective enjoyer of it. Just like I don't watch every single cartoon because frankly, some of the character designs disgust me. Um, and not like I think the characters look uh, you know, fat or unattractive, or I don't want to do bad things to them. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's not a good thing, but I'm leaving it for now. Um, but my point is that, uh, I don't need to be attracted to characters. I just need to not find the character designs repulsive. I find the character designs of a lot of modern cartoons repulsive, especially the so-called CalArt style, which I don't think really is the CalArt style. Um, especially because, like, CalArt started off as, like, the Disney style, which is beautiful, especially if you look at, like, the class, like, the most beautiful cartoon character I can think of is, drumroll, Briar Rose, uh, Sleeping Beauty, whatever her real name is, or, I mean, it's not Briar Rose, Aurora, there we go, um, that is the most beautifully animated Disney movie, in my opinion, and she is the most beautiful princess, and I firmly stand by that weird opinion, um, just because I do, uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there, um, but so overall, uh, I like it. Oh, here, here's what I was going to get to the gay thing. And, and, uh, I looked at the original She-Ra bow and he's as gay or more gay <laughs> in how he's designed, at least looking back at it from now, uh, as Bo is in the modern incarnation. It doesn't bother me that he's black. It doesn't bother me that he's kind of a pretty boy and that he has a, uh, you know, faded side haircut. Uh, none of that's a problem for me. The problem with me for the problem with that I have with Bo is his like gay millennial culture. If you were fighting a rebellion for like 20 years, because I'm assuming uh, Adora is like 18 to 20 years old, if not older, and I wouldn't think she'd be younger. But if you've grown up on your planet and it's been occupied, like let me give you a good example. How many flaming homosexuals are in uh, Pashtun? Uh, controlled Afghanistan and I know that sounds like a really offensive statement to ask and like I'm denying the fact that there are homosexuals all around the world in all cultures and there have been at all times etc 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 which I'm not um because you've got the you've got not only the Pashtun well let me tell you where the homosexuals are in the Pashtun area now they're the the elite rulers of the communities and they enslave and rape young boys who they make dance for them and make kind of Femi looking like I think they put makeup and like pretty clothes on them uh, and they rape them uh, which is bad um, not that all gay sex is rape uh, but I'm saying specifically like and, and, and it isn't America's involvement there for the last 17 years that has created this this isn't a very old culture um, of men raping boys men in high power specifically raping boys who have no agency and are possibly seen as property I don't know all the uh, all the cultural baggage around uh, the dancing boys in Afghanistan but there's a whole documentary about it done by, you know, liberal PBS or whatever. So if you want to, or government-owned PBS, so whether you're on the right or left, like, you, you can't really argue with that probably. Probably, I think. Anyway, but um, I'm just saying there's probably gay guys in Afghanistan who aren't dancing boys, who haven't been raped and sexually abused, who 
don't act like bull acts, and they might even be Taliban or uh, ISIS fighters. And uh, why am I bringing that in? Because the horde has been occupying, just like the United States has been military occupying uh, for almost two decades. And uh, I would think that the culture would be affected more by that. Now I understand, again, the princesses who have withdrawn, like Mermista and like uh, the flower child one, um, where like, I understand that their cultures aren't impacted by the war as heavily as the uh, Bright Moon folks are, but like, I don't get a good understanding from the show of how far removed Bright Moon is from like the Horde territory. And I would assume that the Fright Zone is like the, the stronghold and the Horde has outposts that it's inching forward, inching forward, whatever, moving forward slowly over time as they defeat, as they, you know, have bands of their soldiers maraud and attack and destroy, uh, you know, farther out lands of, of ban uh, rogue princesses. Uh, which is like the lie that they're using. So, um, anyway, uh, I just, I don't like the, the millennial gay culture. If he was gay, I would be fine with that. I would not mind. I'd be, <laughs> I think I'd be happier to have a gay character in a kid's cartoon than I would a, like, uh, body positivity uh, character whose purpose is not to show that we should be like kind to people who are having weight problems but to promote that kind of thing like I think I'm more comfortable with that because some people are gay and I I think it's uh the argument for the arguments for and around being naturally fat are harder to mount than the arguments around being naturally gay um and I know I'm making like a ton of controversial statements but I'm also pushing back you know I don't think I'm going to make any money off of this because I have no followers and no following. I'm just kind of speaking my truth and I want to get some of my thoughts out there before I continue writing my, my post. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. All that being said about the, the culture and how it would be affected and how it should be affected, honestly, I don't like how, um, and this is something I don't like, I think it's about Mark in, in Voltron. Like, he's too happy-go-lucky for the situation that they're in most of the time. Like, he's hitting on mermaid girls and stuff under the sea uh, in his merlion or whatever. And, like, and I think that was in season two. And that made me a little uncomfortable. Like, dude, you're, uh, you know, fighting for your life, running away from the Galra. And, like, you're uh, hitting on chicks. Like, come on, that's not realistic, is it? But maybe it is. I don't know. My life, my life has never been uh, threatened like that, you know, or been in, like, a constant state of, uh, of uh, a fear or war or whatever. So, I don't know. Maybe that is how you react can't say I've been in those shoes. Anyway, um, wow, this is a wide-ranging discussion. Uh, so this is why I call it offhand remarks, folks. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, really, okay, so then it, looping back to the final problem, and I'll need to wrap this up quickly, um, Adora is too masculine. She looks too much like a boy. She has too much of a boy body to excite me because I'm a totally straight male. Um, okay, bud, if you say so. You say so. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyway, uh, she's appropriately feminine. She's appropriately feminine for a children's show. Um, you know, she's not wearing a skirt. She's wearing pants, but she's in military. She was raised by like a fascist military dictatorship uh, <laughs> whose symbol are like bat wings and skulls and stuff. So uh, one, that's why she's not very feminine. I think her outfit is cute, especially that red jacket. Uh, I think it's a very cool look. Um, but anyway, that her horde outfit is really cool, um, and I liked when they gave her the poncho, but just because I like ponchos, um, I think Glimmer should give her her poncho full time, but that's just me. Anyway, um, I'm really stupid about ponchos. I don't know what it is. I just like them a lot. Anyway, um, and then when she turns into She-Ra, uh, She-Ra is not a full-time person. She-Ra is not who Adora is full-time. Full-time Adora is shorter. She's uh, thinner. She possibly has a more pronounced bust line. I don't know. She has, uh, you know, decently proportioned hips, like, like a real person would. I'm not saying this excites me or attracts me. I'm just saying she looks like a woman, like a young woman. Um, and then when she turns into She-Ra, this is actually my favorite thing about it. She goes through this, like the Sailor Moon inspired, I would like to think it is. I mean, cause come on, who are we kidding? Um, although maybe that's what the original She-Ra transformation looks like. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I need to go back and look at that. Um, just for reference, not because I need to do it to, uh, you know, punch my nerd card. Anyway, um, 
Maybe that's what I should say. she design is good even though you can't punch your, punch your nerd card to her. Um, that's a little gross. Sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, the bulky, muscular, um, possibly more masculine design, which I don't really think is that much more masculine, except in like a couple shots where you can see as she's changing position, like swinging her sword and stuff, her crotch looks pretty bulky. And I'm uncomfortable drawing people's crotches all the time. Again, I'm an author, an artist, a commentator. Um, as an artist, <laughs> I don't like to draw people's crotches because it makes me uncomfortable. And I used to be uncomfortable drawing women because I felt like, it was like a kid, because I felt like people would judge me for making their breasts too large or too small. And like, even my wife criticized me. She's like, why, you know, why not make her more busty? And it's like, well, darling, I'm not a pervert. And that's not the purpose of my drawing of this to, uh, you know, be excited by it or anything like that. But you know what? Human anatomy is human anatomy. We all have these bodies. Doesn't mean we have to sh flaunt them or show them off. And I'm not advocating that. But, um, yeah, uh, She-Ra is like supposed to be like this She-Hulk, this warrior. I'm going to say goddess, but just because that's kind of what I always go with. Figure. And, like, she doesn't need to be hyper-feminine, although I, I, I do think it was weird that her crotch looked, you know, like, broader and bulkier and more manly in a scene in one of the episodes. But that could have just been, like, you know, sloppy animation technique and inconsistency. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm liking She-Ra about halfway through the show. I want to finish it. I'm going to be writing about it, and I'm going to be posting my writings about it uh, on uh, here as well as on my website, luminousbeings.blog. And uh, that's it. I'm out of yo.